The Honda CRV is one of the most successful SUVs worldwide. Alone in the US, just in one year, almost 400,000 pieces. That's really massive. And here's the new generation, has been out in the US in 2017. In 2018, also comes to European markets. We'll make a roundup about the all new Honda CRV exterior, interior, and what else is there under the hood? Features, technology. We'll take a look. Let's go. The new CRV is the same platform than the new Civic, by the way. And you can see in the front is a more harmonic design. First of all, in the predecessor, it was basically split in two elements. Here, this round shape, a friendly face, and again, one unit now with headlights and front grille. And the front grille has this active shutter technology, so when not so much cooling is needed, the shutters are closed and therefore improving then the wind efficiency. In the lower part, you still have this crossover look with a rather rugged plastic fender. And the car is a little bit wider than before. 4 meters 58 or 15 foot is the total length. It's 6 centimeters longer than the predecessor version. Also, the wheelbase has been made long a little bit. We'll check out how that has an effect on the interior. Here then also with massive 18-inch wheels in the two-color scheme, looks pretty much technology oriented, so um, also a special highlight for this vehicle. Of course, all optional, standard one comes with smaller ones. Then this rugged look here again at the wheel arches. The side profile is dominated by the dropping line, you see in light and shadow at the height of the door handles. And this very characteristic rear angle of the CRV has been remained a little bit. The shoulders are a little bit wider here and it looks somehow more elegant also in the side profile. You can see that the taillights are already beginning right here and they have been changed even more. We'll take a look at that. Now this part has really changed. The taillights now a little bit Volvo-like, aren't they? You know, with the vertical here and then the horizontal. Uh, overall, it looks more chromish, definitely. So this is really different from the predecessor model. By the way, also the ground clearance is a um, little bit higher. So plus four centimeters now at 20 centimeters. So for soft off-roading, that's also now more suitable. And there's a little wider track. So you see the whole car is also a little bit wider. You can see that from the rear. And let's take a look at the hatch. So non-electric here with struts well, wow that looks pretty amazing so pretty square dimensions here also with a replacement tire and then there's this top cover that is a little bit wobbly so there's no rail on the either side but considering that it's still quite nice and then let's see we can also flip the seats with those right in here with those levers and yeah, that works. And maybe this one needs a little push. There we are. But the front seat is um, too much in the front right now. But you can see here you can you can load things through. So pretty versatile in the use. And I suppose there's also um, possible to put this one here higher. Yeah, there we go. So you can put this one a little bit higher, and then you have an even loading through surface. That's very well done, also quality-wise, it has imp imp been improved massively. And here, also in the white color, how you like that one, we here with privacy glass, looks of course a little bit more spectacular, that won't be happening in real life with this black screen. And this is also the hybrid prototype with a new mild hybrid engine. It's pretty interesting to drive that one too at a later stage. Also see the hybrid logo right there. So what do you think? Which engine will you go for and also which color would you choose? Let's check the interior and the front. So what do we have here? Looks quite nice. Soft materials at the inside of the doors, should be leather red. And then it really looks like it's not matte wood, but you know, somehow even out. But it looks real actually, I think it's real wood. Also a nice accentuation, really some premium feeling. Well, those high glossy black, I don't fancy that that much. You see it collects a lot of fingerprints there. Not too much space at the inside of the doors here. Um, shouldn't fit for two big bottles. 
Then at the inside, of course, base, you can also get fabric seats. I guess in US also leatherette. This one, I think, is the full animal skin spec. But the interior itself, you, need, you see there are completely new seats. Push them a little bit backwards, soon finding my seating position. The steering wheel, we know that basically from the Civic, also with those transparent buttons here, left and right, for example, for cruise control on the right. And then you can see there's a digital screen here now. So you have, at the maximum setup, a 7-inch screen left. You can see a digital speed. And also a 7-inch screen on the right. So this one would be in the, the, the top trim. So infotainment-wise, a big upgrade. And the shifting lever, you can see below that, has been integrated like a van. Like you know so from, from, from the vans, for example, basically integrated in the middle console. Here, in this case, the automatic gearbox. But I mean, why not? You can easily access it by this way. Then let's get inside and see how the seat can be controlled and steering wheel and stuff. This one here to manually pump it up. So maybe, you know, just a little bit to sit a little bit more straight. Electric then for the lumbar support, then the steering rack right there. So it can be also controlled in the reach, so you can find a good position here. And well, the first impression is that it's actually quite comfortable to sit in. You know, you have this typical high seating position, as you know from the SUV. And here the back part can also be controlled manually. And it feels actually quite grown up, the CRV. Before that, this was also um, let's say a good standard SUV with a good price-performance ratio. Um, they also intend to keep it that way, so not everyone will buy it in the highest trim level. Uh, I think that's, that's also um, pretty much fine. So it gives you a nice high standard seating position so that you get a feeling you don't need anything that is basically bigger. So that's, um, that's really interesting. So this would be um, you know, the way that I would be seating right here. Um, by the way, here also a big mirror with a light too. So, um, you know, for some that's very important that we have the, the light right there. The visibility to the front is a little bit limited. It's not too big, the front screen. That is due to the design and also, the, you know, the, the, the front hood is pretty um, bulky. Um, here on the top, by the way, we have, um, let's say, it's not, not real hard plastic. It's some leather red cover. So overall, they have improved also the build quality. Um, what I'm questioning a little bit, well, you have this horizontal stress in the cockpit. You will soon see that also from the rear. But then again, you have a lot of different design elements here. Maybe that's a little bit too much, a little bit too disturbing. So it's not really a simplistic design. Now the interior overview from this perspective. There you can see the new horizontal stress of this cockpit and also the integration of the screen. The infotainment system was so far the weakness of a lot of Hondas. You can see here it could react a little bit faster, but visually it is way more attractive than before. That's important. You can also connect the phone via Bluetooth. That's a um, you know, standard function for sure. Let's get to the home menu, what else we can see. It's also the smartphone connectivity. That one then will be en enabling you to connect also, you know, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Again, the nice use of the wood here. I think that's my favorite trim also for the vehicle. The climate unit is still separately, so you can easily control it while driving. Econ there will be a button to reduce the throttle input then. And here again, the automatic shifting lever, you can easily press down. Sport mode will turn up the RPMs a little bit more. Electric handbrake. Then we also have a seat heating available. And in the lower middle console, we have a 12 volt power supply. And beverage holders, they are adaptive. Very easy to reach, actually. Seems quite ergonomic to me. And wow, how much room do we have right here? Another 12 volt power supply, USB. USB 2, so to connect with your phone, and HDMI, and again, so much space in this vehicle. Um, it's, you know, the sim this vehicle is not screaming out. It's, it's in some ways really simple, but then again, really versatile and practical, especially for families. And so for your glasses, you can put them right here, and hey, that's an additional mirror. I think, <laughs> there you can see Michelle. Maybe you can see, you know, the, your children in the rear, for example. I'm not sure, but because, ah, there it is. So this is maybe, you, you don't have to lean back all the way then, hey, what you guys are doing, stop that. You just have to watch here then, just like slide in and look there. And stop that, don't do that. <laughs> now to the rear, by the way, door closing sound. 
could, a little bit better, couldn't it? But what's really great? Wow, that's really 90 degrees opening. And also, you know, some nice visual elements here. Soft touch also right there. Really great from the quality. And how easy is that to attach child seats, Isofix on the outside seats, for example. So easy to access this vehicle here. That's real, really great. So well done, Honda. Then let's get inside. And how do I sit here in the rear? Wow, that's amazing. That's really such a good package and will be so important for the customers of this vehicle. Also in the headroom, I'm wondering if it's 86 or 6 foot 1. It leaves me plenty of headroom. And probably this is the best thing of the new car, you know. Like we were a little bit longer, cars a little bit longer, um, but then it doesn't you know, get too bulky on the exterior. You know, as you can control the angle of the seat here, I can. this is the most upright seating position and it's really super comfortable in here also for tall people. I have to say, it's maybe one of my favorite cars here at the booth, so um, I think the sales con success will continue. It seems to be you know, improved in so many different respects, and this one here probably my favorite aspect of the vehicle. By the way, here's the seat belt for the middle seat. It's quite a funny uh, construct. Um, well, you have to do it like this. Then you have an armrest right there with cup holders, and it's really interesting that you can change the angle of the rear bench. That's really helpful to relax maybe more or to sit more upright. Um, like this and this. This is the difference. And then you can also put it to the front like this. You see that the lower part goes down a little bit. That is enabling the all flat loading surface. There's by the way also an electric tailgate available. Not the manual here one today. But optional also electric. And what's interesting, this one here is also available now as a seven-seater even on the European market. This one here is the five-seater today, but you can also get a seven-seater. And very interesting, two USB supplies for the rear passengers. Also, I think so many good ideas that are basically simple but just helpful in everyday driving. So what's under the hood here? Well, no hydraulic struts, so um, I have to search where... Hmm. I can't find where I can put it up, so I just hold it for a second. <laughs> well, this one is the 1.5 turbo petrol engine, 190 horsepower, um, in mainly for the European market. And for example, in Russia, you can also get a 2.4 liter natural aspirator engine, also with 190 horsepower. And the new one will also soon be available a 2 liter mild hybrid, so naturally aspirated with mild hybrid technology with 215 horsepower. So looking forward to drive all of those engines. And now to our conclusion for today, the Honda CRV. Well, front wheel drive and all wheel drive will both be available. Also manual gearbox and automatic. They mainly use the CVT automatic transmission. Looking forward how that one has improved. But I think the most important thing is, well, exterior wise, just a little fresher basically. Looks a little bit more modern, but they have, you know, remained a rather an evolution. The interior with new infotainment optional if you want to have so. Um, upgraded materials so more quality of materials inside that you don't have the feeling of driving you know a cheap SUV this is really you know a very good standard and of course the big, biggest thing is also with a new generation more room in the interior and that's really convincing so the usage of space because the car is not super long but with this still compact SUV you have room for you know the whole family basically also now optional as a seven seater even in Europe so I think that was pretty convincing and the overall package as the price will probably remain relatively the same. The overall package of this car is really very good and that's, that's what making it also so competitive. So what do you think? Give me a feedback about this vehicle and let's go on further to more highlights.